All right, what you're seeing here today, folks, is a Glen L Dynamite. About five months in the making, a little bit longer than I intended. In fact, about three months longer than I had intended. Uh, nice little boat, uh, 11 foot too long, about a five foot beam. Uh, right from Glen L. Um, great patterns, instructions were kind of meh. Obviously, uh, written by someone with way more boat building experience than me. Lots of uh, lots of boat building terms and not a lot of explanations, but we kind of muddled through. Uh, got the thing done, hoping for a little bit of a spin. Yeah, you can see, nice lines are just going to bend down here at the back. Uh, the reason I went for it is a nice V bottom, very hard chines as well. Should ride well. It's meant to ride like a, a small runabout. Um, power today is a 1953 Evinrude, kind of a utility motor, uh, 15 horsepower uh, fishing motor, but uh, ran well last time we ran. It hasn't run since 2007, so we're kind of interested to see how that goes today. Got to run it in a barrel before we take it down. Hasn't uh, it ran perfectly at the time? But uh, when my father passed away, I went for a little bit newer power on a newer boat. So this is my first uh, large boat building project. Like I said, I was looking for something that didn't have a flat bottom anymore. My knees and my butt won't seem to take the flat bottoms, please. But this was way, way more complex than uh, uh, I had intended it to be. There is one missing panel. Um, I'm going to put hinges on that, and that will be where the uh, gas tank goes. Um, I'm, I can see myself wanting power trim um, because it's not very handy to get to the motor. Um, it's, but we'll see how that goes. Um, that's a long way off. Put a lot of money into this. It's uh, essentially they tell me it's only about 150 pounds of wood, but I'll tell you there's a lot of uh, epoxy in there. A lot of epoxy. Um, great experience working with epoxy. It's amazing stuff. Uh, but uh, at uh, ooh, Without covering the outside, I think I've got about $600 worth of epoxy plus all the fillers and, and stuff to make the fillets to uh, round out the corners. That is a stitch and glue design, stitch and glue. That means the plywood wood, uh, there's, it didn't have a frame in the bottom. The, uh, the plywood was um, cut uh, in kerf like a, at the front of a sea flea and then it's pulled up and held together with little wee copper stitches and then it's reinforced at the back with... Um, I'm drawing a blank with uh, with epoxy after that and then the stitches some of the stitches came out afterwards and some didn't pretty cool design pretty sporty design uh, they has good reviews apparently it will go about 29 miles an hour with a 20 horsepower motor on it so I'm anxious to see how that goes the uh, controls are actually from uh, my cousin's cousin's boat when we grew up Shandos Lake in Apsley in Ontario we um, we were on the lake with our sea fleas and my cousin's cousin had a um, actually a Hal Kelly Jinx and uh, we didn't know it was a Jinx at the time but we just called it the Jinx and it had a much bigger motor it had a motor kinda like this beast and this is the 1953 Johnson but it's all apart right now just no time to get this thing going it was uh, one of the few really fast motors that Johnson and Evan had ever built the early 50s uh, 25s uh, but I'm not sure about this one you can see it has some brown on it, so it's got a later power head. It's been switched out at some point. I'm not sure it'll be the screamer I'm hoping it to be, but we're going to give that a try probably next spring after we do some painting on this. So we're going to fire the motor up, see how it goes. Um, the um, You can see the, the steering wheel, very old. Um, traditional old, old OMC controls and some a little bit of hardware down here as well. And, and the one on the front is kind of butt ugly. Um, and it's actually supposed to go closer to the front, but the uh, the front actually comes to uh, quite a point down here on the bow. Where am I? There's my finger there. And so we couldn't put it too far down. Colors are uh, kind of meh. They're the colors I wanted, but it came out very blocky and plain. So when we paint it up, when we do the final coats of paint in the spring, we will uh, add some graphics and some splashes and whatnot. Not sure about the inside. I was so proud of the inside. I didn't want to uh, paint it and uh, I ended up putting some waterproofing on it um, but uh, I know that it's all covered over I'm not sure it's a great idea anyway lots of leaves in there but you can see a lot of the the, um, the reinforcement it's uh, just a plain it's a quarter inch plywood base but it has uh, four layers of uh, narrow plywood uh, and then um, backed by a, a, like a strong back a, a vertical piece of uh, 
of plywood as well. And uh, the floor is screwed down. I'd love to show you the whole bottom, but it is, uh, it's very, uh, very heavy and won't have any trouble floating right side up. And the, not, uh, not too much time spent on the seat yet, just a folding seat. We'll get to that, uh, assuming it floats and, uh, and um, it, it runs well. We'll get a nice seat there for now. So we're gonna give this, uh, the motor a try and then we'll put it in the water and take it for a spin and see what uh, comes up. Catch a leak. Well, it took a bit of convincing, about 10 pulls after um, seven, eight years. Um, a little bit stiff. I'm not sure that I uh, put the oil down into the crankcase like I should have, but uh, let's see if it'll start again. I wasn't sure if I got uh, enough shots of the lines of the boat. Um, it's not uh, beautiful in terms of uh, how I looked after the uh, epoxy. I got a little bit tired of uh, sanding it, I'll admit. And because it was just a beat about boat, I didn't go crazy. But I thought I would just bend down a bit and show you what this baby looks like. It's very, you can see the flared sides on it. The nice chines, it's, uh, it's actually a runabout, it's just a 11 foot version, that's all. Um, nice curves on it. This proved a bit, a little bit interesting. I'll show you this here. It doesn't tell you exactly how to smooth all the framework underneath, and so it just says to lay out what they call a batten, which is just a small flat piece of wood across all the framework to make sure that it lies down, which sounds like a great idea. But as you can see here, the plywood doesn't bend the same way as a batten or a, or a thin piece of uh, a spruce or pine. And so, um, even though it laid really flat, um, ahead of time when I started to install the plywood, it, the plywood just didn't bend. So my plan is to put a, a bumper strip here. I think that will do the trick. Um, it's glued, it's solid underneath. It's just a little bit too much of a bend right here for the, for the plywood. So yeah, that's how it looks like. I wish I could show you the inside a little bit better, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Like I said, I haven't figured out the, the color scheme quite yet, but we're gonna give it a test drive. Uh, step one, does it float? <laughs> step two, does it go? And then next spring we'll put it and, uh, and maybe put a big motor on it. So that's, uh, that's a Bryden Boy um, steering wheel that was uh, first mounted on a boat in the 1950s. So. Some, some neat history here as well. So this is the boat, the um, motor well built in with some drains. So you actually prefer a, um, um, a long shaft motor, which, which puts, which obviously the, the transom up a little higher and then you get a nicer combing. And, um, but all my motors that I would have to put on this are all short shafts. So that's my, I had to, uh, I had to drop that down. And so not, not quite as nice a design, not quite sure what to do with the combing on that. Uh, and still playing with that. So lots of time in the spring. Anyway, that's what the boat looks like. Uh, we'll put it on the water tomorrow and I'll give you a, a rundown at that time. Here we are, beautiful Lake Vernon on Thanksgiving day in Canada at least. That turquoise boat right there. I used to own that, and that's my pontoon boat. Mm, I think that one there with the blue top. And I've got a V bottom kind of over there too with the Yamaha on the back. Yamaha may be the motor of choice for this baby, but for now, uh, this is a new build. It's in the water, no leaks so far. Shouldn't have any. It's got enough epoxy to, to sink a ship, so to speak. We're gonna see if it'll fire up, and I just wanted to take a couple of shots while it was sitting here at the dock. 
Well, it moves. Uh, sorry for the yellow rope, it's all I had. Didn't think I'd be getting it on the water this weekend, so I just grabbed whatever I had in the garage. It's moving. Have a look back here, can I turn this? There I am. Uh, there's the motor, it's running. And we're splashing around, no leaks, no leaks. This is a good thing. Yes, we're moving. <laughs> Just gonna put around and then we're gonna give it some speed and see how it goes. Thirty kilometers an hour, yeah, twenty-ish, twenty miles an hour. That's with the fifteen on the back. Sounds like it's running a bit rough, but you know what? It's running <laughs> and it's floating, and we're having a good time. Beautiful day on Lake Vernon. Um, just gonna have some fun. With all the weight in the back, uh, it's plowing a bit. It's certainly neat. I don't even know what I'm showing the camera. 